I'd like to demonstrate why gaps in return planes are bad news for radiated emissions. We'll be using this circuit board to simulate the effect. Note that there are two wires taped down that uh, we'll be using as clock traces. One wire has a, about a five centimeter gap in the return plane. The other wire does not. Both wires are connected through BNC connectors and terminated in 49.9 ohm resistors as a load. Now we'll be driving these traces with uh, this pulse generator. This is actually designed to be a harmonic comb generator and it produces a series of 10 megahertz harmonic signals and uh, we'll be connecting those up to each trace. We'll be receiving the, um, the harmonics through this Beehive near-field probe. This particular one is an H-field probe and this is connected to a Siglant SSA3032X spectrum analyzer and we're looking from 10 megahertz to 300 megahertz. Notice I have a display line here at 46 dB microvolt level which we will use as a reference. So let's drive the non-gapped trace first and see what happens. Okay, I've connected the pulse generator to this trace and we'll be receiving with the near-field probe. You can see that the average amplitudes are about the 46 dB microvolt level where I've set the display line. And it's about the same no matter where I, where I uh, probe. Note that um, as I'm probing the unconnected trace there's a little bit of harmonic energy noted but it's very far down, uh, over 30 dB down. So what happens when we now drive the gapped trace? So now we're driving current out to this resistor, but the return current uh, now has this gap in the way. And we'll see in a moment that the current is, the return current is forced out away around this gap back to the source. So let's go ahead and um, probe this trace and you can see that the amplitudes are about the same as uh, with the ungapped trace as you might expect. But as we get closer to the gap you can see that it peaks about 5 dB higher so you can see that there's energy across that gap there. And then it goes back down as we approach the resistive load. But watch what happens when I uh, probe the return current. Now remember from the uh, module, return current is going to want to flow directly under the clock trace, right? So as we get up to the gap, note that I can actually trace the path of the return current right around that gap. Isn't that interesting? And then it goes back to the source. But here's an interesting thing. What happens when we probe the ungapped trace that's not even connected? Notice how much harmonic energy is on that trace. Now the reason for that, this gap forces the magnetic flux lines around this trace to encircle the entire circuit board, thereby coupling in energy to this victim trace. Now this is um, basically what we're seeing here is crosstalk from this trace from this clock trace. So placing a gap uh, is not only bad for radiated emissions as we'll, as we'll see in a minute, but it also causes uh, crosstalk. So let's do something a little different. I'm going to reconnect this to the ungapped trace and we're going to connect 
a wire to the ground plane here and it doesn't matter where it's connected. This wire is going to simulate uh, for example an I.O. cable or maybe we can call it a USB cable. Now the gap here causes large amounts of what we call common mode currents to flow throughout this whole board and connecting say the shield connection of a USB to the ground plane or return plane of this board will allow these common mode currents to flow out this cable and the cable will actually radiate just like an antenna. So let me show you that using a current probe. Now we'll be talking about current probes in a, a module coming up, but these are very good tools to use. So I'm going to uh, put the wire through the current probe. And current probes are designed to measure very small amounts of current on the order of microamps. So here we're measuring the currents through this wire and you can see that there's some resonant peaks, a couple of them, and these resonant peaks in the harmonic energy content is largely due to resonance effects of the wire plus the board. And um, so we're driving the ungapped trace. There's, there's a little bit of harmonic energy here, as we can see. And that's because uh, this circuit trace is not perfectly flat against the uh, return plane here. But let's drive the gapped trace now. See the difference? The harmonic content has jumped up 20 to 30 dB and all, all this harmonic content is RF currents flowing out along this uh, simulated I.O. cable and uh, radiating out uh, causing a radiated emissions failure. So hopefully this will help convince you to avoid uh, running high-speed clock traces over gaps in the return plane.